For this short Bible study, we're going to look at uh, three verses in the Gospel of, Ma of Matthew, chapter 16, starting at verse 1. The Pharisees and Sadducees came up and, testing Jesus, they asked him to show them a sign from heaven. But he replied to them, when it is evening, you say, it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, there will be a storm today, for the sky is red and threatening. You know how to discern the appearance of the sky, but cannot discern the signs of the times. The signs of the times. That's our subject today. The Lord takes issue here with the unbelief of the Pharisees and Sadducees, who, in spite of differing theologies united together to attack him. They demand, demanded a sign, not out of genuine interest, but because they, of their unbelief. The Lord reminds them of the signs that God put in the sky in Genesis 1 and 14, and chides their lack of understanding of the signs of the times, their times. They were standing in the presence of the one who was the greatest sign from God that the world had ever seen and has ever seen. Isaiah's promised Messiah, the one described as Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Father of Eternity, Prince of Peace, a child that had been born and given by God. Galatians 4 tells us, when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under law. The sign of the fullness of the time. He chides them that they cannot discern the signs of the times. Christ was himself the sign of their times. That sign changed the world forever. He is, the Lord Jesus Christ has upset political and relig, relig, religious establishments to this very day. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 10, Jesus said, I have not come to bring peace. Yet Isaiah calls him Prince of Peace. What went wrong? What, was, was Isaiah wrong in that? Jesus brings peace to troubled hearts but so far not to the world. In the Bible, there are two great signs from God in the history of the human race. First is the moment that Jesus was born. In that moment, God's plan of salvation appeared, a plan involving the birth, life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. In his death, a full and final price was paid, a ransom paid for sin. Guilt could be removed from the guilty, saved through faith by grace. Those who have claimed that pardon await the assembling shout that will gloriously announce the rapture of the church to heaven as scripture reveals. Then, as the prophet Daniel and others reveal the reveal the Antichrist will arise on earth and a great tribulation will come. The prophet Jeremiah speaks of it as the time of Jacob's trouble. Paul speaks of it as the wrath to come from which, unlike Israel, the church will be delivered. When this has been fulfilled, the second great sign will appear in the sky. Matthew chapter 24, verse 30. Then the sign of the Son of Man shall appear in the sky, and so on. Jesus there is echoing the prophecy of Daniel in chapter 7 and verse 13. Jude talks about men who revile the things they do not understand. Only those taught by the Spirit of God can understand this. 
Peter talks about mockers who ask, where is the promise of his coming? Yes, the enemies of Christ mock the teaching of the rapture and the second coming. But beware, God is not mocked. Public refusal of biblical truth, persecution of Christians, the uncertainty, confusion, corruption among the nations, and the ingathering of the nation of Israel leave us with little doubt of the imminence of these events, the signs of the times. As we observe them, we must turn our eyes to heaven, looking for the blessed hope and the appearing of our great God and Saviour, Jesus Christ, as Titus tells us. We should be watching and waiting for his return as those who discern the signs of the times.